Greetings. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host, and this is Community Focus. We have on the line this morning an exemplary of a person, uh, Apostle Clifford E. Turner, uh, overseer, founder of Liberty International Network. Good morning, Apostle Turner. Good morning. How are you? Fine. Apostle Turner, uh, 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 we're very happy that you've taken time from your very busy schedule to be with us on Community Focus. And I have to thank our contact person, Beverly Mole, um, who highly recommended you to speak to Lake County. Now, Lake County, uh, Illinois, is approximately 750 to 800,000 people. Uh, but uh, I don't know how many up at 5 o'clock this Sunday morning uh, listen to the program, but I understand we have a, a pretty good uh, listening yeah. audience. Um, we want, first of all, Apostle Turney, f- for you to tell our listening audience a uh, little bit about your personal and professional background. Okay, well, um, I am a um, native Chicago, and I've been born and raised in Chicago. Okay. I am the third generation preacher in my family. My grandfather was a preacher. My daddy was. Okay. All of my uncles on both sides of the family Wow. were, were preachers. All the males were preachers. And uh, I promise you, I uh, preaching the gospel was not on my radar blimp. I had purpose in my mind to be... Uh, successful businessman. Okay. <clears throat> but we can see who won that battle. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, uh, God will win the battle. Yeah, he, he undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, I went to school in the Chicagoland area. Uh, I attended several colleges in the Chicagoland area and uh, and in California, I uh, I uh, studied to be a clinical psychiatrist. Mm. I uh, received um, five earned degrees. I thought I was going to take this experience and um, uh, put it into a practice because I always had this uh, underlying question, what makes people do what they do, and, and et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But God had other plans. I, I know irrefut- irrefutably that uh, that experience of going off and studying and understanding my, my, my um, second major was abnormal behavior. Mm-hmm. I, I, that God was preparing me for ministry. And I would need to understand some things about human behavior mm-hmm. that would make the preaching and how to reach people more effective. Um, well, by the grace of God, I found myself going back and uh, doing some things that, that I had previously were doing as a young student in high school, and I was making uh, films. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and uh, told me to to get back to that. And I'm going like, uh, what am I going to film with? And who is going to do the filming? So I just took a little unscientific survey one particular Sunday, and I asked my congregation who understood um, uh, television, who understood filming, who understood post-production. To my surprise, I had um, a pretty large segment of my congregation that uh, were qualified, and even a couple of them working for Channel 7. Mm. So I took those people, and and as we prayed, we sought to get the 
necessary equipment to uh, uh, professionally film a program. Um, I wanted to do something, and I didn't want to do it like on a Mickey Mouse um, format. Neither could I afford to rival anything at uh, Hollywood. So I called my production company Hollywood Studios. Mm -hmm. uh, if you spell Hollywood, it's two L's. Okay. But if you take the L out of Hollywood, which I believe one of the L's is, which stands for lust, you get Hollywood. <clears throat> so um, here comes... Uh, uh, Hollywood Studios, and we started uh, doing low-budget things in-house. And as the congregation grew, our uh, format became more and more professional. And I found myself reaching more and more people. And uh, I was invited to be on a particular radio program, and uh, teaching in the particular area of spiritual warfare and deliverance. And uh, that particular program, Invite, opened a door for me to be on radio consistency, can, can, excuse me, consistently for about a month as uh, the response to the radio program was greatly received. So... That enhanced my uh, my ministry. So here you had uh, church attendance that people were coming because of hearing the gospel and because of television and radio. Mm -hmm. And we outgrew about five locations in the Chicagoland area until we moved to where we are presently at that we call the Mother Church at 2233 West 79th Street. And from 79th Street, uh, we planted a church in Gary and planted a church in Waukegan and planted a church in Zion and planted a church in Bolingbrook. Um, now, these are all churches that I personally went on planted. Mm -hmm. And... Um, a few years later, the Lord spoke to me about going to San Diego. Wow. Uh, and out the door, I went to San Diego. And I'm telling God, I don't know nobody in San Diego. Mm. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> uh, and it's amazing, as I uh, went to San Diego and uh, got on the radio station there, you know, God blessed, and from San Diego, amen, went to uh, Philadelphia, and from Philadelphia went to Orlando. So I found my, myself having churches that I planted um, on the East Coast, on each coast, the East Coast and the West Coast, and obviously in the Midwest and the Deep South. <laughs> I felt greatly impressed to uh, plant some churches in third world nations. Mm. I was visited by an African delegation from Monrovia, Liberia, and we planted a work there and planted a work in China and planted a work in the Philippines. I mean, it just got to where it is today by the grace of God. Uh, 17 churches outside of America, amen, about uh, 100 churches that responded to me in America, locally and nationally. So um, by the grace of God, the TV program took on a new height, and uh, we call this particular inner city program because as I looked at television, I see nothing that reflected what was happening in our community. And um, I said, well, I want to do something 
that I think that my people, because you had mm-hmm. Beverly Hills 90102 or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I didn't see anything about, you know, the black community that was done respectfully and with some good taste. And actually, most of the episodes on The Awakening were stories that were in my life. So uh, we began to film them, and boy, it took off like like gangbusters, by the grace of God, um, because of the popularity of the program. Uh, we won an Emmy Award, a Midwest Emmy Award. We got recognition locally and nationally, and um, even got requests for uh, videotapes, which have gone around the world. Mm-hmm. In, in which I am still receiving requests for. So, you know, the Lord has really, and I would not try to steal the glory of God. You know, I, I probably don't have an original idea in my head. I just obeyed what I felt God spoke to me to do. And the result of it was me preaching, P-R-E-A-C-H which I formed a, um, a ministerial coalition, mm-hmm. an apostolic ministerial coalition, <clears throat> amen, P-R-E-A-C-H, pastors reaching or preachers reaching every available conceivable home. Ladies and gentlemen, again, we're listening to Apostle Clifford E. Turner. Uh, he's an overseer, founder of Liberty International Network. Past Apostle Turner, uh, there are probably uh, 3,000 denominations in the world, uh, but, but could you tell us what's special about the Liberty International Network? In other words, your mission, uh, uh, your goals, and so forth, and uh, that would stand it out from other denominations. Well, I can't speak for any other you know, a group of people and we went but I can tell you this that um you find when you come to any Liberty Temple church local national you you'll find these words scriptures mm-hmm. where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty okay the word liberty means freedom and unfortunately, I believe that unbeknownst to our human effort, we have included more things that, let's just say that men have incorporated into the kingdom of God that really wasn't scripturally suggested by God. Okay. And uh, causing people to deviate, causing groups to have certain factions causing groups and people to major in the minors about a lot of things. But the Lord impressed me, and I'm not talking about having a church where people come, can do what they want to do, because that's chaos. Okay. You'll find our churches being very orderly. But by the grace of God, and I do say by the grace of God, uh, I have endeavored to have a church where people who go through problems all week long, they want to come to a place where they feel like they can unload a lot of that, get rid of some of that stress Mm -hmm. and that tension and that day-to-day mundane feeling of trying to make it for a better choice of words. So that's what we have endeavored to do. <clears throat> with God's help, and uh, and still endeavor to do, as God impresses us to uh, to to reach out and do greater things. Praise the Lord, and also uh, uh, to understand the kingdom. You know, the Lord said to us that there's a difference between the church and the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. The church is called to demonstrate the kingdom of God to the world. So we have endeavored uh, to 
do some things in the communities around the country and uh, in the municipalities and in the marketplace to demonstrate God's kingdom uh, is not only in the not only the church, but the word kingdom is two words, king's domain. Mm -hmm. uh, but to go into the marketplace and and uh, possess, when I say possess, to uh, to move into certain areas where, where God's people have needs and uh, reach into those areas and raise up businesses that reflect how God wants his businesses uh, to be operating and serve as a, as a role model example to the world of what God is. Because we serve a well rounded God. God knows we need, we need him. We need to do uh, assemble in the church, but, we also need to eat. We need to drive cars. We got other needs. What God wants is people at the helm of those things. I have to congratulate oh. have to congratulate you on the work that you're doing. Uh, from what I'm hearing, because Jesus Christ did not have an address, right? He, he no. He moved around the world, healing and and you know and and saving and. Um, you know, for the work of the work of his father, and and you're moving around. He's using you the way he was, uh, you know, being used. Eh? Yeah, I've clocked over four million miles <laughs> <laughs> on an airplane, on an airplane. So we certainly have been busy. You'll find, my brother, that life is connected with stuff that moves. Death is connected with stuff that don't move. Okay. Yes, I... <laughs> We've been moving, <laughs> and that's an understatement. Well, what about recent youth? We have a, a problem where we're losing our youth in the churches, local churches. Why are we losing youth? What are we, something that we're not doing to corral them, to lead them to Christ? Well, the, I believe if it's in the root, it'll be in the fruit. Uh I believe that the deterioration of the nuclear home has caused there to be a, a, a lack of order, mm -hmm. and where there is not order, there's <clears throat> chaos. Okay. And uh, most uh, homes, particularly in our community, are dysfunctional. Mm-hmm for a plethora of reasons. Cut off the head and the body will die. Okay. Well, because our uh, the head of the households have have defected and caused the uh a lot of our women uh to be single family parents raising children and these children need a, an authority figure in the home. Not that mom is an authority figure, but there's really no replacement for dad. I grew up in Inglewood in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And Inglewood, when I was growing up in, in Chicago, was Death Valley, man. <clears throat> okay. I mean, it was rough. <laughs> and But I had a father that was an authority figure, and I had a father that didn't play. And my father, when he said, be home, uh, come home before them street lights come on. He meant it. Well, sad to say, um, that kind of father figure is all but non-existent in our homes. As a result of it, our children have rebelled from all form of authority. That's why they don't do well in school because the, the teachers are authority figures. That's why they don't do well on jobs because the, the boss is an authority figure. That's why they want to get up in jail because they rebel against the authorities. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, Satan has cleverly uh, turned his attack away per se from the church 
and start to attack the home. And uh, I believe that the men and women of God who are aware of this are starting to raise up ministries that different that minister to different factions of the home. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, most of our churches, and you're not going to get probably very many pastors or apostles to attest to this. A lot of our churches uh, are geared to attract women. Okay. Okay. So a lot of the men, when they come to church, they don't really feel like there's nothing that they can relate to. And then you put the church service on the same time at the Super Bowl okay. or the NBA All-Star game, you're going to have some problems. Okay. So, unfortunately, um, uh, the male figure has fallen through the cracks. And, and then, uh, he, then the yeah. male are complaining because women are going into the poor pit. Not only in the poor pit, but becoming pastors, you know. But the, well, ma- the man has not, uh, he's relinquished his role. To, well, to, since the man ain't there and the woman is faithful, uh-huh. God's going to use whoever shows up. Amen. Yeah, he used Deborah. Yes, Deborah was the first judge. Okay. <laughs> okay, and Deborah went to war against a man named Caesarea. Okay. And the men didn't want to go, so Deborah said, fine. Okay. Uh, I was just going to have to deliver Caesarea into the hands of a woman. And she jumped on a horse and started riding off. And when the men saw that, they, they got to think about, well, maybe she might be right. And what if he does? We're going to look pretty bad. So God used her greatly. And uh, when the Bible said God has no respect of persons. Okay. Amen. God used a, a jackass one day, used a rooster one day. Okay. Amen. God's vessels change. God's weapons change. God could use the jawbone of an ass with Samson. God could use a, a rod that budded that Moses had. So No, that's and, not the way he wanted he created the world to be though, right? He, uh I believe ultimately God wanted the man okay. to be at the helm of things, but because men have defected, so God God said, "But I got a kingdom uh, okay. that, that I'm running here." So uh, it's like this: if you were burning to death in a house, uh-huh. uh, and, and uh, you call the fire department, uh, you really wouldn't care if that was a male or a female. <laughs> that was coming to rescue you out of that house, just get me out of this burning house. So we really have to learn why we are here on this earth. Absolutely, and that's called purpose. Okay. And when the purpose of something is not known, my brother, abuse will be inevitable. I'm having a folk of... Christian Forum uh, this weekend at Golan Corral in Gurney, Illinois, and I would love to have you to attend and give some inspiration words if if you're uh, free. Now, there's problems all over the country, and man has gotten away from God. We we, we got police just shooting it's blacks uh, unarmed, and uh, um, it, it seems there's chaos all over, and the people are demonstrating, they're burning, and so forth. So. We're getting together peacefully to discuss so this type of thing that's happening over the country will not happen in Lake County. Uh, We have in police chiefs, we have the mayors, we have in the state's attorney and sheriff, you name it, uh, all get together at at the Golden Corral. We're going to have breakfast first, and then we're going to talk about ways. uh, The educators are going to have superintendents of schools and so forth talk about ways that we can uh, communicate and and uh, so that, uh, you know, this type of thing will not happen. We really don't understand each other. I, I, you know, if I may divert, the first immigrants in this country came from England. England has so many prisoners. They said that we're not going to build prisons here. We're going to load all the prisons up in ships 
and sent them to the United States, sent them to uh, Australia, and sent them, uh, you know, to different parts. But we're not going to uh, be a prisoners for them. So, uh, Apostle, I'm wondering, you know, when slaves come over, can they get justice from criminals? You know, it's <laughs> you know, if I have to say it like that, it's it's that bad, you know. Well, so I believe, is, is there uh, any way that you can share some uh, 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 mission? <laughs> some uh, say it if you're free, you know. Well, unfortunately, I, if you would once again, if it's in the root, it's going to be in the fruit. Okay. The, the warring factions in Africa. Uh huh. The nations that fought one another, the nation that conquered the other nation, they sold that conquered nation into slavery. Okay. So off they went. And what America ultimately inherited was a warring faction of black folks that didn't matter whether that was Watusi or Zulu or whatever. Okay. You bought the strongest of the strong yes. of uh, black men to America. And the, the 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 black men and women today are the great, great, great grandchildren of that warring faction. Okay. Today, that spirit of war, had it, it, it still exists mm-hmm. because I believe as there were warring factions on the continent of Africa, you got gangs here. Okay. Or you got folks that say, you know what, we ain't playing that. So <clears throat> you got a warring faction that's fighting against a faction that were the descendants of the Ku Klux Klan. Okay. <clears throat> so what do you think you're going to have when you get... Uh, the, a warring faction from the Klan and from the Zulus. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty, man. Okay. Okay, because this generation of blacks are not pacifists. What our mothers and fathers w- were subjected to, this generation of of, of, of people whether it be young people or middle-aged people are saying, you know what, they're more educated. We've had 400-plus years of this. Okay. We're not putting up with this. Add to this, we have a social media that keeps us abreast of what is happening around the city, the country, and the world so we can see consistency in uh a problem called racism in America, which really haven't gone away. Mm-hmm. America has never repented of the sin of racism. Okay? Right. And um, uh, I believe what we have today, maybe uh, the Chicago or, or local or national police department, maybe they need some sensitivity training. Mm-hmm. But it's apparent they don't have much respect for uh, uh, black life in our communities. Why, we, we, need a, we need a part two and a part three, and maybe uh, uh, I'll contact uh, Beverly Mole to see if we can set this up when you're available. Uh, because it's, we're really getting to the meat of, uh, of, you know, why we don't get along in in, in this country. Um, but I'll talk with you uh, later on about whether you may be free Saturday morning or not. Okay, no problem. No problem whatsoever. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking with uh, Apostle Clifford E. Turnip, overseer, founder of Liberty International Network. Thank you, uh, Apostle Turner. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, again for listening to another awareness session on Community Focus. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host. Your host.